Welcome to the Stickers on the Mic podcast brought to you by StickerGiant.com, where we talk with our customers about how they started their business, how they're marketing their brand, and how they're growing their company. Without further ado, it's time for the Stickers on the Mic podcast from StickerGiant. Let's get on with the show. Hey, everybody, and welcome back. Andrew with you again uh, for an episode of Stickers on the Mic. Today, we get a chance to talk to part of the creative uh, visionary team behind Porch Box, and that is Heather Stenner. Heather, thank you for joining us. Uh, hey, Andrew. Great day to, to have a little chat. Super excited. Thanks for having me. Nice. So Heather and I know each other through our Longmont, Colorado networks. And, and Heather, you've been a customer of Sticker Giants prior to starting this venture. Absolutely. I work for a nonprofit down in Boulder. And every time we needed stickers, we either asked for some donations, which you so charitably give. And we also always got some extras along the way. And so nice. when we opened Porch Box, of course, we had to get some stickers. So you open Porch Box. This is a new business in a pandemic, you know, in a culture where there's a lot of delivery and drop-offs. The name is self-explanatory, Porch Box. But tell us a little bit more about the business. Absolutely. Well, we build boxes, right? We're going to talk for 30 minutes about boxes. But they are wooden boxes that are classy enough to be on your front porch. They are weatherproof lockable and durable. They come in a variety of sizes and can easily be customized to fit someone's taste. And we didn't actually start the business during the pandemic. I've had a 30 year career as a music educator and during the pandemic, my own music business, I had to stop. And I said, Eric, why don't I help you with your business? He'd actually started it five years ago. Oh, there you go and had launched the name, launched the website. But a little story, he actually made the very first porch box in 2006 or seven, I was out of town and our daughter and him needed something to do while our son was sleeping. So they went into the workshop and they created a milk box because we had just signed up for the local dairy home delivery. And of course on the first delivery, they dropped off this junky plastic cooler and we're like we lived in fort collins in this old town really cute little cottage house and we're like "Uh ah that cooler is not gonna do so they made a beautiful milk box and we called the dairy said come get your plastic cooler and deliver our milk to the the beautiful wooden box on our step and then the neighbors noticed and they wanted one Mm -hmm. and then pretty soon eric was making the boxes for our kids school silent auction And so over nine years, he was just making boxes for family and friends, all kinds of sizes and shapes. And in 2016, that's when I said, you know what, Eric, I think other people like across the country would want some of your boxes. Mm -hmm. And so he launched the website and 800 boxes later, nationwide, we are here today. So I said, I want to help you maybe grow all he had of the website. Mm -hmm. He he didn't even have a Facebook page, right? We just had a website. So that's where how we got here today. So yeah, and I've noticed, and obviously I've been doing some research, and so mm-hmm. Facebook is mm-hmm. following me around. So you're clearly <laughs> pumping in some time though onto your Facebook ads. It's pretty obvious to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so that having that dedicated uh, person um, to handle that for the business is really nice. Um, and you clearly yeah. have an aptitude for it. Um, mm-hmm. So that's sort of the background story. So how this all came about, it's, it's been around yeah. for a while. You've been able to join mm-hmm. the team now and, and really uh, you've always been part of the team. <laughs> mm-hmm. In a different supporting role. <laughs> right. Like let's, let's not get ourselves. Um, but so what, what is sort of the diversity of boxes you feel like you're productizing and, and, and how do you like, hit different needs for your your current customers is is where I want to start with your current customers. Yeah, 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 great. We, right now we have three standard boxes. We have the milk box and it's a small uh, box that holds six bottles of glass, glass half half gallon bottles. Then we have our namesake, the porch box, which is kind of a double wide. It's just twice as long. And then we have a big parcel box that is the perfect box for home delivery. So Amazon and and that really picked up, of course, during the pandemic. 
Mm-hmm. So we've got those three. The, the coolest thing that happened when I decided to go to work, I started looking for a place for Eric to get out of our house. He's been totally. making 800 boxes in our basement for five years. In the basement. I, wow. Yeah. In our basement. So we'd lug the wood in and we'd lug the, we yeah. So in May, we found a really sweet industrial space. And for those of you who can see me, I'm actually standing in our workshop right now. And we've got uh, like 1,500 square feet of now building space. So we got a panel saw, which means mm. that now we can offer custom size boxes. Oh, wow. That changes. Big oh. deal. Yeah. yeah that's so, huge. so that's like product number four, really. Well, actually. Like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's oh, like, yeah. you got the three things, but then there's yeah. like, this is an infinite amount of, of products totally. potentially. He's been, he's been using this kind of like a playground and actually the fourth box, we haven't given it a name yet, but we have a bigger box. We're going to call it like the Jethro box or the big, we don't know. But, yeah, yeah. And then the custom box. So we're hoping to have those five standard. Actually, last week we made a huge box for a customer that wanted to hide their hose on the oh, front yeah. of their house. Totally. And, and their garden wand fits beautifully in it. And it's oh, sweet. Nice. It's the biggest box he'd ever made. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, because like, I mean, especially right now and, and probably for, I mean, Amazon is getting so big uh, and Ooh. bigger. They're hiring yeah. now that mm-hmm. the delivery and, and front, you know, front porch sort of world is, there's no limit to that market really. Mm-hmm. And, and there are a lot of other boxes right. out there, right? You search for boxes for home deliveries and you're going to get a lot of options. But as far as we can tell, they're all metal or mm. plastic. Mm. And our, our niche is really wooden. We want something classy that's like worthy of prominent placement on somebody's porch because you show up and you don't want this. I don't want a metal locker on my porch. No. So the sound of it, actually, listen to, listen to the sound of it. We just, like as soon as I'm sitting, at, I'm, I'm making dinner or something and that sound goes, everybody runs outside like, woo, we got our package. Oh, that's and, true. Yeah, the Pavlovian response of just like yeah. the sound of the box closing. That's rad. But you mentioned like Amazon, right? People want to secure their packages. Right. We've been really surprised. We offer a lockable box. Uh, Eric built this, designed this really cool hidden hasp that mm. when you're not, when you don't need to lock it, the hasp just hides up inside the lid mm. and there's an extra loop to hang the, the lock. Mm. But if you do want to lock it, it's, it's, possible and but we were really surprised at how many people don't get a locking box Hmm. like all we really want to do we don't use a lock on ours at home we just want to kind of conceal right that is there the porch pirates that are out there they're they're gonna come if they're gonna come get something out of our box if we know something really expensive coming then maybe we'd we'd bring a lock home or from the shop and we'd have it locked up, but right. everybody's kind of different in that way. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And I mean, the parcel box seems like really a, a great solution, especially if you're living in a city or something or, or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and the milk box, I mean, we have a pretty strong delivery culture here in Longmont between two different we do. areas. Yeah. So that's. And know, actually yeah. Longmont Dairy is one of our customers and we build all of their wooden boxes. And is that right? Yeah. Well, that's good so, for rec- recurring business too. Cause I mean, they're adding, you know, Oh, we, need, we need signed up 10 more people and they don't want the cooler. It's like, well, here we go. Exactly. Um, so that's fun. That makes a big difference, huh? Like to have like a, a steady uh, client. Mm-hmm. That is really nice. Someday we would like to add more dairies, but of mm-hmm. course just staying local right now. That's great. I, I will tell you one of the things that we did or Eric did early on Someone contacted him from Atlanta, a company called Boxlock. I don't Mm -hmm. know if you've heard of them. They make this smart padlock. And for those of you who can see, it's this really cool yellow, really slick looking metal lock. It's it's huge. And it allows for multiple deliveries. So super cool. So I could use my phone on the app and make a QR code for you, Andrew. And I could give you, I could say, exactly. And it actually ties into the UPS and FedEx. So when I know a package is coming and I put this thing out, they, all they have to do, the FedEx delivery guy walks up, scans the package. And because it, my email knows it's coming, opens up, they put it inside. And that can happen multiple times in a day, right? If you have a lock on your box, 
and you literally have to use a key, you can only get one delivery a day. Well, or a, a, a code that you have to give out and, and multiple drivers. I was actually just thinking about that when I was looking yeah. at, the, at the box behind you. I was like, what yeah. happens when, you know, you know, there's just between UPS and USPS mm-hmm. and FedEx and Amazon, yep. that's a yep. lot of different people, especially it could be a different person every day, depending on the routes. That's really problematic. So that lock helps solve that problem for you. That's really cool. Totally. We have um, a UPS guy here at the shop and I made a QR code just for him. Because when you, they can't deliver to a commercial address without someone being there. Of course. And I said, what if I send you this QR code? And it, then it tells me on my phone, guess what? Taylor, the UPS guy, just used your box block and put something in. Fabulous. So he feels yeah. really confident about that. So then you're able to like also then, um, you know, work with that other company to deliver that solution for people. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, nice. I dig it. Um, so... You know, we talk a lot about on the show, you you know, you've come up with the idea and it's been around for a little while and you're in the scaling process. You just moved out. So your manufacturing will become more efficient and creative and and potentially profitable, which is obviously huge. So your growth is like right there. And and that's what you've done to grow the business to this point. Right. Now, what's the growth strategy next? Because I I already asked you, what do your current customers look like? What is Mm -hmm. like your ideal customer or your next market? Uh, Mm -hmm. And and how do you plan to grow the business to meet that market? Yeah, good question. So obviously right now we're focused on homeowners. There's a lot of people shopping at home that want something classy. Mm -hmm. We're not really looking for commercial businesses right now, except dairies. If they want to add that piece of class or it's pretty classic to have a milk box. If you search antique milk boxes on Google, you'll see some pretty cool stuff. Oh yeah, I'm sure that there's an Etsy market for that too. But yeah, like, totally. these are very utilitarian, and they look good, and you can stain them and put numbers on them. So I mean, you're able to customize yeah. to the point where the classiness is even almost up to the to the buyer. Yeah, um, totally. So so we've taken yeah. kind of that the the basic right. We had the Squarespace ad. I think Eric only did twenty five dollars a month of Google ads the entire five years. Like that's all we ever did, and he. He actually had to lower the price or raise the prices at one point because we never got to see him. He'd come, he had a day job, right? He has a day job and then he'd come home and make boxes and we never see him. So I was like, I think you did chill out a little bit. We want to see you. Uh, he did get a trademark also oh, wow. for our business yeah. back uh, five years ago. And he, you know, he got the necessary state and um, uh, local taxes uh, or licenses. But uh, one thing we did since I got to start working with him is I made it feel kind of like legit. I had a logo, uh, a local person design our logo and our design brief to help with establish the color palette and typography for the, for the business so that when we got a web designer, they could just fly. Mm -hmm. I got one of my former students who is now in their uh, late twenties to be my photographer. So we, Eric built 23 boxes in a couple of weeks and we had a big photo shoot. I uh, got a local business to do t-shirts and the sign on the door really tried to just put that footprint into the community. And then of course, sticker giant, we got, yeah. we wanted a sticker to slap on the side of the box so that when I brought the box to FedEx, they would know what is inside the box. Oh. And, um, and then, Oh, pretty cool. The, your little stickers I've got, we got this big label, this big oh, nice. sticker. Yeah, yeah. That's the packing one, but then we got a super tiny one and we use that for our, like a little business card. And yeah, we realized yeah. that they fit perfectly on the paint bottles. We put a touch up paint bottle oh, in with every box. Fun. And we're like, perfect. So it's so all coming together. It is coming together. And that's a nice little piece of service mm-hmm. actually, like that going mm-hmm. the extra mile for the customer. Like, mm. it, cause I mean, you're just buying a box right at, at the end of the day, but it looks like you've got some like signage and the lock option and the mm-hmm. finish choices. And then if that's really cool that you add like touch up paint, that's like when, you know, you buy a car, mm-hmm. you get a little thing of touch up paint right. cause they know you're going to be at the yeah. grocery store. <laughs> but have, you don't really message it. that though. So it that's is. like actually a moment of delight for the customer, which is really Really important. It is kind of, we don't, yeah, we don't message that. And today we just got an inquiry on the website. Like they wanted us to paint the box black. They're like, do you, would you paint that? And of course we'll do any color they want and we'll just go get the paint and do it. Yeah. 
you're like, we just painted the house. We repainted the house. We're using the bear, you know, seven, four, five. It's like, yeah, we'll be- Exactly. We can do that. And cool thing, like if you move, you can take your porch back with you and repaint it. Uh, exactly. Some people use it. We've had a couple of customers that are like artists and they, we send them an unpainted, unprimed box. Oh. And they, we haven't got the picture back from them yet, but they, you know, they used it as a canvas. It's pretty oh, there's cool. There's a fun future collab right there with right? people to like do a branded limited edition. Well, I, well I, these are the ideas that make me excited. Yeah. Um, so you so, have you have a you have a lot of options. Yeah, professionally, I will tell you one thing that I did because I've been talking to little kids for 30 years and their parents. I knew that I needed to ramp up my own professionalism when I was speaking with customers. So I joined a Toastmasters group in april love it such a great supportive group of people and it's really helped me think and consider not just what i say but how i say it what is toast yeah what is toast masters toast masters it's an international organization that people get together and they work on their public speaking skills practice not saying so or um so we work on transition working on speaking kind of just quickly on your feet. Actually, yesterday was my meeting and they let me do a mock podcast and I got to practice for this. Practice. Look at how smooth you are right now. Good for you. It was awesome. So I, I, I love the local piece that we've been able to connect. And we also, I think I heard one of your po- recent podcasts that you interviewed someone from 99 Design. We did. Laura, who does their partnerships, we launched a partnership with them to try to help out yeah. customers who don't have artwork savviness to like, uh-huh. it, but do have a little bit of a budget because there is a cost involved at 99 Absolutely. Design, you know yeah. I mean? So I, since we had a Squarespace site, I just looked up Squarespace, Squarespace expert and I found 99 Designs. And that's how we found our web designer. She's out in Oregon, I think. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. Cause we talked to her. It's not just like we're, we're trying to get people connected with like sticker or label designers, but they like do mascots banner, like the design world is, is, is open for, for yeah. their potential market. And that's cool that you found a web designer. She was, she was speaking highly of how um, that Squarespace partnership is actually very good for them. Yeah. Um, actually the person we found her, she's an accounting background because we needed a really good um, a customer shop experience mm-hmm. and we needed a custom order form and Squarespace only offers like three variants and right. we have a lot paint, no. black bow lid and address scripting. Yeah. So, and like, they, yeah, the finish, the trim, you guys, there's really no end in sight for the customization on a box. I mean, you have a specific set of finishes, sure. but yeah. you want to have the potential to grow those out too. And if you have locked sure. into three things, you can't do that. We also print Longmont Dairy's logo on the front of their boxes, right? Nice. So all they have to do is ask. How do you do that? We've got a company out of Denver that we make the panels and bring it down and then they just print them oh, on the so wood. It's ready, to, it's ready to go. That makes sense. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, you talked a little bit about Facebook and obviously hiring a web mm-hmm. designer and having being able to like yeah. take that task off you and, and your husband because when you're a single yeah. owner or a, a literally a family business, like yeah. there is no line to blur. So like <laughs> that's great. Um, and you're handling Facebook, you said, t- for the time being, but what other marketing are you doing other than the Google ad and Facebook, which are sort of the most traditional routes mm-hmm. right now? We're selling on Etsy. He's been doing that for a while. We, we, I just realized that you, it's called sell on social. Mm-hmm. PayPal also has an interface for okay. selling. We're selling on Facebook Marketplace just local. Right. So, because we don't want to have to ship. I don't want to get into that. We're already yeah, spending it's a more lot like, of time shipping. It's just doing one-on-one with like Longmonters mm-hmm. or Boulder County people because it's, that's the mm-hmm. way to grow. Sure. One, actually, one really neat idea is I have a realtor coming to the shop today. We think that these boxes are perfect closing gifts. Yes. Right? Who wants more champagne and a fruit basket? But they could literally have this box painted to the color of their client's house and oh, have I love it. a parcel. So that's, I just, that's pretty I cool just, connection. I just talked to a real estate agency and, and they're called New England Size Setters and I'm, I'm working on a blog about them. They Great. dig the hole and put the sign in with the for sale sign. That's their business. Wow. 
they dig holes. Business. They literally dig holes in the ground and put a post in. <laughs> and I and 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 I have some friends that are realtors, and I I, I like real estate. I mean, I own my home and would run a rental property. So I, I I was like, this is amazing, and a cool business. And they're in the Northeast, so it's a very you can drive from That's Massachusetts great. to Maine in in a day and do a couple of jobs and and make your time. It's like three hundred bucks or something. Wow. Um, Great no, idea. I take that back. I think it was like 150 bucks. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is working with like that is exactly what you're trying to do. It's like, yep. I love that as a closing gift. I think that's fantastic actually, because it's such a high value purchase. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And like so, the realtor is like this person that's there for that. I don't know. It's, it's such a unique, uh, buying experience. Well, our friends have come to know that we are like that family that has a box for everything, right? We mm-hmm. have our milk box, we have our porch box, and then we have our parcel box. So we have all three on our front porch. You and better, yeah. we're like, hey, just <laughs> put it right in there. Yeah, it's kind of obvious. But I will say we've, we've <laughs> added the Facebook, we've added Instagram, right. Pinterest, of course, LinkedIn, YouTube, Google Business, and a new one called Alignable that I, yeah. I have heard of. Yeah. Neat one. And also, I, I don't, uh, I don't know if you know about the GoDaddy Smart Line. You're, I know about GoDaddy, but what's the Smart Line? Yeah, it's so fabulous. Uh, we just have our cell phone, and it's a very limited price for basically a business phone. And so my own cell phone rings, uh, and I know it's on the Smart Line, so it's a business call, uh-huh. and it's I can text. So customers text me pictures of their boxes Amazing. when they arrive. And so GoDaddy Smart Line. That's something that's that cool perhaps yeah, your listeners will. That's actually the first will. time that's come up because it's oh, funny great. you say that because like the phone system thing, especially for remote work and yeah, that's a, let's just put it lightly, yep. that, that can be a big pain point for a business. Absolutely. You like who I mean? is this? Is this a personal call when I answer my phone? Right. Yeah. And I just love it. And you, you, you can have it on multiple phones. So my husband could have it, but it only, you can set it. So it only rings like he's at his day job right now. So I don't want the business phone to ring and interrupt him. No. So I'm taking all those calls. That's really so, cool. I yeah. And, really and you it. really do want to be, I mean, it's hard to like, again, to keep the line separate, but if a customer is ready to buy, you know, and they have that last mm-hmm. question and mm-hmm. this is the way you're giving them the chance to communicate with you. Like that's pretty terrific. Um, yeah. If you're willing to open up, your life to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of nonstop. I do list business hours, uh, you know, everywhere on our phone. We're, we're trying to set that balance. And that's one thing you know, going into business and supporting, uh, during the pandemic, my husband was working from home and we saw him a lot and it was awesome. We all I loved bet. it. And he's recently had to go back and we're all kind of missing him. Right. And right. that whole, it's, it's different for everyone. But I can't just say, hey, uh, what, what, what do I do? How do I fix this box? And, and you fix it. You this customer asked this. So we're, that whole balance of work-life, family balance, it's, it's super important. And we, we make sure we don't talk about the business around our kids. That if the kids are in the room, it's all about them. Right. And if they're not in the room, then we can talk business. But or otherwise, like, it I mean, as long as they long. Because that's, wow, that's a great education for them. They're teenagers. Yeah. Yeah, but still, like, the fact that y'all are doing that is is going to pay massive dividends down the road. I, I can, well, mm. I hold that for my kids, but that mm. is important to try to do that. And and I do re- recall yeah. our founder, John Fisher, talking about that when him and his wife started the business in their basement. And But he yeah. ended up using his kids to work for that. Like, I mean, they were part of the team, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah, absolutely. It is nice to have that legacy, uh, but it's nice to hear that you're being respectful of them because they have their own lives that they, you know. I think when we asked the kids, we said, we, we're going to rent this new workshop. And they're like, that's fine. As long as I don't have to work there. Oh, and we're like, okay. Until they, they have need to, some, until they need daughter, some scratch. <laughs> right, right. Well, our daughter already works in a smoothie shop. She's got her own thing going on. Good. But when I got all dressed up to come be here today, they were like, oh, what's going on? I was like, oh, yeah, I just gave you the sticker pod. Sticker Giant podcast today, and they're like, oh, right. But because we hadn't talked about it before, it was kind of new and fresh. And I let them kind of come to it. As an educator, I try really to be present to how I'm presenting and just let them come when they're ready. 
So that makes sense, actually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're not going to make like force them to do it. That is a quick way yeah. to push them away. We could get um, into parenting. All, yeah. We could, but that <laughs> is a different podcast that I would. That's right. <laughs> I would require a whole nother uh, set of time for. Um, yeah. we, so we've talked quite a bit though about the marketing side and, and also mm-hmm. your product development side and also just your origin story, um, yeah. which is really what this is all about. Um, we've kind of even talked a little bit about what's next, but like just in case, um, what, what do you think is next for y'all? You said you have this real estate thing and there's a, f- a few products to develop, but like when you look at like 2021, forget, mm-hmm. obviously there's a lot that could influence it, but what do you look at for 2021? for for porch box yeah i think we've only been in our new workshop for two months and we are just we come on saturday mornings and work from about 5 a.m to noon while it's still cool and we make all the boxes for the week and then we can just easily ship throughout the week i think we we just kind of want to get in a in a pattern and get our name out there right i just started a facebook page two months ago I'm learning Instagram. I'm over 50 and I don't know how to use Instagram. So my level of like, when you're a music educator, when you teach things happen every day and you make it happen. Mm -hmm. But with a business, I am learning the lesson that things take time. And Eric did an amazing job in five years where we're usually number one or number two on Google search for porch box. You search that and we are right at the top. We know people pay a lot of good money for that, right? You did it organically or naturally or just by putting in, by like being there. You're there. Yes. And And for for some people that are listening, I think that's a key. Eric knew he had to really use that common search engine language all over the site. Mm -hmm. And it was was an infant site. You could tell when you were reading it, it said porch box, porch box, milk box. He just splattered that Mm -hmm. language, search engines, all over the page. Mm -hmm. And that I think really helped build Mm -hmm. and specifically in the very first line. It it wasn't a very pretty site, but it did the job. But it's coming together now, I'd say, you know. (laughs) I think it's looking pretty good. Thank you. I'd say you're on your way. Like there's a a dedication to it. Like and also like I said, I mean it doesn't take much searching to be followed around Facebook, but um Mm-hmm. Or liking, once you like the page, you know, you open the door quite a bit. Um, yeah. but I've been noticing a lot of Facebook ads and um, that definitely is where people are living and Instagram looks yeah. so well with But that. you know what, Andrew, I think the, the biggest thing for me is when the biggest advertisement or marketing that we can have is a happy customer. Totally. And they want stickers, right? Mm-hmm. People are like, did you get your stickers yet? When I see them, like, I know you were ordering stickers. We want some because they want them on their coffee cup and that conversation of like, what is this? And I mean, they're boxes, right? But it, it's a place, it's a community place. When people come to our house, they're like, oh, what's in your box today? It's, a, it's like a fun conversation starter. And I mean, it's a box. It's, it's, not, it's not rocket science. It's just a, a nice old box. Yeah, but it better be nice, right? And that's what you all are trying to do. And I, I absolutely. Um, and like I said, I especially with this holiday season coming up, there's going to be a Mm -hmm. lot of boxes on a lot of front stoops. And and, um, I I look forward to watching y'all's growth with that. Thank you. Someone actually said to us the other day, what's to keep the the porch pirate from just picking up the box? Taking the box. I I didn't didn't want to ask that Yeah. (laughs) No, people ask me that. And actually Eric lays it out on the website. He'll drill a pilot hole if you want in the bottom or the back. And you could just, uh, okay. cement it, you know, get some uh, a, a mending plate and like a fender washer and, and some screws and just bolt it down to your porch or your deck or wherever you keep it. Yeah, or put it on the wall. I mean, no one wants to put yeah. a hole in something, but at the same time, it's right. like, do you, okay, you put a hole in your siding, which you can replace, but, right. you know, the seven, Actually, you know, things that someone, get stolen. Yeah, someone told us they, they have a long driveway. They live in a rural place and they took a 50 pound sandbag, just put it right inside. And they're like, Nobody's going to walk off with that. It's going to be locked and it's going to be super heavy. Yeah, so it's going to be heavy. and like- That's another option, just depending on the size box that you have. But, you know, we're, um, we're trying to build that community of these are good people. And just like I said, not very many people get a locking box. I'm kind of surprised. People just want to kind of conceal what's inside. And like uh, I have a, a huge flower uh, area on our front porch, but my watering can and everything is my garden stuff is on the back where my our garden is mm-hmm. so i keep my pruners and 
I keep all those oh, nice. special little things that I, I want to have it look nice and stuff it away in the porch box, but it's right there and convenient when I need it. Yeah, that's so cool. I want one. Um, so, uh, but I want to build it myself. Um, like <laughs> yeah, in, in awesome. your shop. <laughs> Come to the shop. Come to the shop. Eric will build it with you. He'd love I like, that. I like uh, uh, working with my hands for sure when I'm not That's doing this, this technology stuff. Um, what was I going to say to to sort of bring us all home? Um, you know, y'all have a, a great thing going and we're going to wish you thank the best of luck. And I thank you for mm-hmm. that. And we appreciate your business and for everybody out there listening. Um, Heather has helped us cover a, a quite a lot of ground as a, she herself mm-hmm. being an entrepreneur now, but also working in a, an entrepreneurial space, obviously that was, it was there for you with your husband and his business. And now yeah. you're going to really take it to the next level. Um, so the last, I guess the last thing it's your porch dash box.com. That's your website. Yes. Uh, right? I just, Everything got is the there. dash in it. It does yes. have the dash. You got to pronounce the dash. Mm-hmm. Um, and we love to say on the show, every sticker has a story today. That mm-hmm. sticker is going to be on the front porch of millions of houses in America, right? Mm-hmm. In the next awesome. five years. Outstanding. <laughs> uh, we, we, we love it. Uh, Heather, thanks for your time today. Thanks so much for having me. And thanks all of you for tuning in and listening and feel free to reach out. If you want to talk some more, any of you guys about some, I heard a great quote in a webinar the other day that said, if you're starting a business, contact someone who started a business a year ago. And I love that one, right? We can learn so much from each other. So I appreciate learning from you today. Uh, thank you very much. Well, uh, so, uh, thank you everybody for listening. Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, and every sticker has a story. What's yours? That wraps up this episode of Stickers on the Mic, brought to you by StickerGiant.com. You can download us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcatcher. Thanks again for listening to Stickers on the Mic. We'll see you next time.